Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. At $99, a Libre Personal Edition has to be one of the most affordable parametric of feature-based CAT program around. It gives you a sample of what you can get if you're willing to pay a bit more. Not a lot, but just a bit more to get what Alibri markets as professional packages. Alibri Design Professional and Alibri Design Expert. $699 and $1399 respectively. I'm going to show you some of the latest functions in Alibri Design Expert 2011, the latest version. One of the commands added to this release is called the Scale or Mirror command under Features. This command lets you scale your design by a certain factor, say one and a half times or two times, and so on. And its companion, mirror function, available in the same dialog box, lets you define the mirroring plane, then project the design on the opposite side of that plane as an identical part, except mirrored. Now the command works beautifully, no quibble there, let's have no question about that. But if I were to suggest room for improvement, I'd say it would be great if the resulting part created, like the scale part for example, becomes a brand new part with its own updated dimensions, not just a one and a half times projection of the original part. This will make a difference if I continue to edit the new part as a component in its own right. Like to be able to consider its width, extrusion height, length, so on and so forth, without having to think of what the original dimensions were. Same goes for the mirrored part. I like to start treating it as a new part, not just a mirrored projection of the original constructed on the opposite side of a hypothetical plane. Let's have a look at the other major feature debuting in this release, Convert to Sheet Metal. This is a function meant to help you automatically reconstruct imported sheet metal parts, like a SOLIDWORKS sheet metal part, or something imported as I just a step. When it comes in, it arrives in a library with no more than a collection of faces, which make it difficult to edit them individually as features. Here is a SOLIDWORKS sheet metal part. So what you do is, you first open it in the library, then save it as an Alibri part. Then you invoke the convert to sheet metal feature under, well, the Features tab. The dialog box will ask you to pick a tab that serves as the primary tab. Next, you click on the Replicate Sheet Metal command. That lets the software find and determine the bands, related tabs, and create them as features. Once you have a catalog in this window, you can review the folds and bands created by the software. And if everything looks right, you click OK, and this is what got created in a library. Note that now you actually have a history tree, a list of parametric features you can edit and modify to further enhance your sheet metal part. Bear in mind this function is for converting parts originally created as sheet metal, with all the typical sheet metal characteristics. Suppose you build a part as a solid first, then decide to see if you want to build it as a sheet metal part. Well, if that part is simple enough with all the curvatures, walls, and plates that can be translated as sheet metal, you can still use this function to convert it. But if the part is too complex, or doesn't correspond to what a sheet metal part is supposed to look like, you'll probably get unpredictable results. I should point out some of the delicate nature of this dialog box. You can move the palette around, but you can't really resize this. So you could conceivably get into a situation where the tab that you really want to select as the primary tab happens to be hidden behind this palette. My experience shows that you can reorient the part using the pre-designated views to get to the position where you can click on the surface you need. But if you click on some of the rotation or panning or zooming tools, then and come back to the pointer to select the tab, you could inadvertently cancel out the convert to sheet metal command altogether. So watch out for that. 
I think folks at Libre will be the first to tell you that they are targeting a different market than, say, SolidWorks, Inventors, or other cat companies. They are more interested in, and aggressively going after, the do-it-yourself maker community, aspiring engineers, hobbyists, and homegrown inventor. But that doesn't mean the software isn't good enough for production work, for building CAD models for manufacturing purposes. Some of Libre's interface elements are not as polished as I hope. That's just my view. But that may be because by degree of exposure, I'm more familiar with how other CAD systems work than a Libre. I think the best way to determine if a Libre will suit your purpose is to try it out. At roughly $700 or $1,400, even the professional versions are just a fraction of the other parametric CAD packages. You get pretty much everything that you would expect in a full featured parametric CAD package. Until next time, this is Kenneth Wong wishing you happy tinkering.